This is Tech in Politics, and my name is Andreas Jungherr. Welcome back to the podcast accompanying the lecture series Digital Media and Politics and Society at the University of Bamberg. In this and the following three episodes, we will discuss the impact of digital media on the public arena. Democratic societies need spaces in which people and political elites become visible to each other, develop shared agendas, and settle on collectively binding decisions. These spaces need to be open to people from all walks of life and groups in society. They need to feature the voices of the privileged as well as those of the marginalized. They need to provide people with the information they need for self-governance and control of the elites. They need to provide elites with the information they need to govern and represent the people. And although these spaces will fall short of these needs, as long as they are transparent of their workings and allow for critique and subsequent improvement, they can be made to work for people and their pursuit of the public good. These spaces are the public arena. The public arena is a space of structured tensions. Different people from different groups with different interests encounter each other, compete for attention and try to shape politics and society. The public arena is a space in which political elites perform their competition for attention and power and which they use to learn about the people and their concerns. These encounters and competitions are noisy and at times come to violate norms and established practices. Tensions within the public arena come to the fore especially in times of structural shifts within the institutions and organizations hosting the public arena. We are currently witnessing such a shift driven by the digital transformation. Digital technology is deeply transforming and challenging institutions that formerly held a near monopoly on hosting the public arena, the news media. Digital media weakened the economic foundation of news, that transforms modes of information delivery and consumption, and they allow for the emergence of new information providers who do not necessarily share the commitments to institutional norms and practices of news organizations of the past. At the same time, we see new types of structures emerge that become as important to hosting the public arena as news media were in the past. Digital platforms like Facebook, Google, TikTok or Twitter. Here, we need to understand their role as structures of the public arena and develop new norms and rules for the contribution taking into account the differences from former structures of the public arena. The digital transformation of the public arena is one of the most important challenges democratic societies face today. Associated opportunities and hopes, but also dangers and fears, feature prominently in public discussions. In this and the following three episodes, We discuss the public arena, its democratic functions, and challenges introduced by digital media. This discussion is just getting started, so be prepared to leave with more questions than answers. Societies need spaces for groups to make themselves visible to each other, to settle on the most important problems of the days, exchange different alternative approaches to solutions, and settle on collectively binding decisions. These spaces are the public arena. In our book, Digital Transformations of the Public Arena, the sociologist Ralph Schröder and I define the public arena through the following three characteristics. And I quote, One, the public arena consists of the media infrastructures that enable and constrain the publication, distribution, reception and contestation of information that allow people to exercise their rights and duties as citizens. Second, this excludes how people use these infrastructures for private life or for commercial purposes, except when these uses come to bear on people's rights and duties as citizens. Three, these infrastructures mediate the relation between citizens or civil society on the one hand and political elites or the state on the other. End quote. This definition points to four important elements of the public arena. First, the public arena consists of structures that make people visible to each other, document and make visible current events, allow for public negotiation of meaning, 
and exchange of alternative interventions. In modern societies, these are predominantly media infrastructures. These media infrastructures consist of institutions, such as the news media, and technologies, such as print, radio, television, and the internet. As we have discussed in the previous episodes, shifts within available media technologies impact media institutions. One important impact is the shift from broadcast technologies such as print, radio and television to digital media technologies that deeply impacted the economic and moral foundations of established news media institutions. The consequences of this impact are still not settled and contribute significantly to the current state of public insecurity and fear about the impact of digital media on democracies. Second, media structures are not neutral, but instead come with specific features that enable or constrain, or at least incentivize or disincentivize, specific activities and behaviors. Different structures, as in institutions and technologies, of the public arena will therefore enable or constrain different patterns in publication, reception and contestation of information. A public arena relying on mass media and broadcast technology will feature a limited set of very powerful gatekeepers that decide about what actors and topics to allow access to the public arena. In contrast, a public arena relying on digital media with widely distributed access points will feature less control of gatekeepers about which actors, voices and topics gain access. In digital communication environments, access is not the limiting factor. Instead, it is a tension. Power in public arenas depending on digital media, therefore, lies with actors who can amplify selected actors, voices and topics already within the public arena and provide collective attention for them. Third, the structures of the public arena always feature more information and activity than that directly connected with the pursuit of the public good. This was true in the past and stays true today. But associated consequences need to be kept in mind. For one, the public arena is hosted on structures provided by actors with commercial interests. This was true for radio stations, television stations and newspapers, and is also true for digital structures, such as platforms like Facebook, Google or Twitter. Societies need to figure out how to align the interests of these commercial actors hosting structures with the functions these structures hold for society. Associated tensions cannot be resolved, but need to be surfaced and publicly negotiated. Also, usage practices of structures used for recreational, entertainment and commercial uses will influence the use of set structures for public purposes, such as the discussion of politics. In the past, this was discussed in the context of a perceived commercialization of news. Today, we see this with practices coming from fan cultures in digital communication environments that start shaping patterns in the discussion of political or societal issues and controversies, not always for the good. Fourth, the public arena mediates the relationship between citizens and political elites. It makes people visible to each other. This provides the opportunity for the mutual recognition or conflict within the bounds of ordered political competition. Beyond this, it also allows for the formation of new groups of people with shared interests and the construction of new shared identities, providing the potential for new lines of political conflict to emerge. But the public arena makes people visible to elites and elites visible to people. The structures hosting the public arena are therefore crucial elements in democratic representation. The internal workings shape who and what in society becomes visible to elites and therefore provide the mediated reflection of society elites react to and that shapes their perceived option space. A public arena constituted by structures that foreground groups in society who already are privileged will incentivize political elites to react to their interests more strongly than a public arena that features many competing voices, some traditionally privileged, some freshly formed from traditionally marginalized groups. The public arena and its structures therefore matter a great deal with regard to who gets seen and represented in society 
and the opportunities provided for groups with shared interests to find each other and articulate shared interests and demand representation. The structure and structural shifts within the public arena are important. They shape political discourses, public beliefs, conditions of political competition, the representation of social groups, as well as the option spaces for collective action within a society. This makes the structural conditions of information environments, their transformations and consequences into important objects of study for sociologists, communication scholars and political scientists. The increasing importance of digital communication environments and the associated increase in digital data traces of contributions to and interactions within the public arena makes it also an important topic in computational social science. Conversely, computational social science offers interesting new perspectives to larger theoretical discussions about the public arena, its structures and dynamics. The public arena and the structures hosting it are a crucial element in democracies. They provide the basis for people to inform themselves about politics and society, to meaningfully engage in discourse and ultimately exercise their rights to self-government. Accordingly, the structures of the public arena are routinely interrogated with regard to the enabling or detrimentally affecting democratic functions. Not surprisingly, there is no shortage of sometimes conflicting normative prescriptions for how the way structures of the public arena should function. Of those, a recent account by Jan Werner Müller fits our discussion. And I quote, They should be widely accessible. Access should not turn into a privilege for those already advantaged. They should be accurate. That is to say, political judgments and opinions must be constrained by facts. Even if facts are always fragile. They should also be autonomous. That is to say, not dependent on more or less hidden actors in a corrupt way. They must be accessible by citizens. And as a result of all of the above, they can be accountable. End quote. While Müller talks primarily about parties and the media, we can extend his prescriptions to the structures of the public arena more broadly. Paraphrasing Müller, for the public arena to function, the structures hosting it need to provide access to people irrespective of the societal position or status. Information hosted should be accurate, in other words, bounded by facts. This being said, especially in politics, facts and their meaning are subject to public contestation and a collective negotiation of meaning. This boundedness can therefore not be established purely through narrow fact-checking. Also, structures of the public arena need to be independent of existing powerful actors or interests in society, be it financially or structurally. Finally, these structures need to be transparent in order for people and regulators to be able to critically interrogate them regarding their inner workings, dependencies and their impact on the democratic functions of the public arena. As with any normative prescription, the one proposed by Müller needs interpretation and qualification if applied to the assessment of specific structures in the public arena. While single structures might fail in specific instances, for example digital platforms being primarily used by people with easy access to digital devices and not by others or some partisan media being closely aligned with political factions, as long as the set of structures provides broad access and features different voices and viewpoints, one might feel not too troubled. But, if on the other hand, the structures of the public arena as a set would systematically exclude people or legitimate, as in bounded by facts, opinions, then worry about the democratic contribution of the public arena is warranted. Before we go further and discuss specific structures hosting the contemporary public arena, let us quickly examine the functions the public arena serves for democracy. Here, we'll focus on three contributions. Visibility and representation, group formation, and supporting collective problem-solving and collectively binding decision-making. A prerequisite for meaningful self-government is visibility. Visibility of people to each other and to elites, 
visibility of elites to people, and visibility of events and conditions of importance to the public. Structures in the public arena provide this visibility to different degrees and through different mechanisms. News media, the structures hosting the public arena before digital media, primarily produce and distribute information about the state of society. Trained journalists go out and report the news, pursue deeper investigations into selected topics or comment on events. In this coverage, people and their voices feature and become visible to news audiences and elites. News media also provide elites with a platform to reach people, for example through interviews or guest contributions. This coverage its selection choices and the representation of different people and voices is subject to interrogation and critique. Other structures, such as digital platforms like Facebook, Twitter or YouTube, do not produce information themselves, but provide actors the opportunity to publish information and reach people. This could be people who post their opinions and reactions to current events or report on events they witness on their public social media profiles. This could also be politicians or parties who publish information on their profiles. Or this could be traditional news organizations and journalists that use social media platforms to increase the reach of their coverage. While the role of news media in the public arena has been well established, and the lines of interrogation and critique are well established as well, those for digital platforms are currently established and negotiated. By now, it is clear that platforms need to accept responsibility for the content they provide access to and that they distribute. The exact rules by which this is about to happen are still contested, though. Currently, there needs to be a balance established between users' speech rights and users' protections from harm through false or misleading information or harassment. Currently, this is a topic of great academic and industry activity. This is true for both, the crafting and assessing of governance rules and policy, as well as the empirical identification and measurement of harmful content and its effects. An important corollary of visibility is the role of structures of the public arena in providing the basis for the formation of politically aligned groups and their representation. As we have discussed in the previous section, a crucial feature within politics is the formation of politically meaningful groups. And I quote Bourdieu, the power of imposing a vision of divisions, that is, the power of making visible and explicit social divisions that are implicit, bringing into existence in an instituted, constituted form what existed up until then only as a collection of multiple persons, a purely additive series of merely juxtaposed individuals. End quote. Jan Bela Müller goes further in describing this process. And I quote, here, representation is not conceived as substantively or descriptively reproducing something that already exists. It is not a matter of mechanical reproduction. Rather, it is a process in which individuals offer to a possible constituency an image of themselves based on so far unrecognized ideas, interests or aspects of their identities. As a result, Citizens might perceive themselves and the politics they need in a novel light. The constituency is not so much reproduced or even revealed as talked into existence and as a result uses its political freedoms in novel ways. End quote. Structures hosting the public arena provide spaces that allow for or hinder these processes of collective group formation. Processes corresponding with these expectations could be observed with Me Too, Black Lives Matter, or Fridays for Future. These groups formed around grievances made public on digital media. People posted and bonded about experiences, formed collective identities, and coordinated political protest. The variety of causes concerned and international occurrences shows that this is neither a feature specific to select causes or locales, Instead, it appears to be a crucial function of digital media in the formation of new political groups and mobilization. The associated dynamics and effects merit much further attention. 
A further democratic function of the public arena is its support in the formulation and solving of problems relevant to the public good. This features very prominently in the work of sociologist Jürgen Habermas. In his conception of Öffentlichkeit, a public sphere in the English translation, the structures allowing people to meet and discuss politics can be assessed by the degree to which they allow for broad access, rational exchange of facts and alternative solutions, and disinterested in evaluation of options with a goal of reaching best outcomes. Not surprisingly, empirically, structures of the public arena tend to fall short of these ideal characteristics. Also not surprisingly, the normative goals presented by Habermas have been strongly contested. Most importantly, his account of rational problem-solving through communication has been confronted with the approaches that see competition and conflict as a more fitting account of exchanges in the public arena. But moving away from the by now mainly historical question of whether structures of the public arena allow for the communicative ideals postulated by Habermas, this perspective offers many important insights. For example, many academics are working on the development of specific structures, democratic innovations, that try to enable people to meet, exchange viewpoints, and find solutions to common problems. Here, the constitution and governance of mediating structures matter. Also, the subfield of democratic theory, epistemic democracy, focus on the forms and conditions under which people can democratically define problems and contribute to solutions that are within the public interests and foster the public good. The structures of the public arena, old and new, can therefore also be interrogated with regard to their contribution to the formulation and solution of societal problems. Well, as soon as we get really get going, it's time to close. And this is it for now. In the next episode, we will discuss the effect digital media have on one of the most important structures hosting the public arena, the news media. As always, the script to this episode can be found online on the course website, digitalmedia.andreasjungherr.de. There, you will find detailed sources, references to further reading, links, and preparatory questions for the exam. This was Tech and Politics the podcast of the Chair for the Governance of Complex and Innovative Technological Systems at the University of Bamberg. I'm Andreas Jungherr. Have fun reading and see you soon.